Hey, it's Alex from Android Central. Today we're taking a look at the new SwiftKey 4.3. This is a new version that's just been launched as a test today. Um, so as you'd expect from one of the leading Android keyboards around, you get uh, all the features you expect from earlier versions of SwiftKey, the cloud integration to save your personalized stuff, um, and uh, SwiftKey Flow, the new sort of continuous input type thing they've got going on. But of course, with a new version of SwiftKey, you get new features. And the new features in 4.3 are all based around making the keyboard easier to use in terms of the size and the position and all that stuff. Of course, you've always been able to customize how SwiftKey looks and behaves, and uh, they have all your themes to, uh, to customize. SwiftKey 4.3 takes it a step beyond that, giving you a lot more control over how big the keyboard is and where it is on the screen. So if we bring up the keyboard here, you'll see there's actually a good reason why we're using this gigantic HTC One Max to do our demo. It's in compact mode, which contracts the uh, keyboard into one corner. And uh, we can switch to full and resize it. All this does in full mode is basically change the height of the keys. If you're in compact mode, these options will actually make the full keyboard bigger or smaller. Another new mode is thumb mode, which uh, gives you a split in the middle of the keyboard to make it a little easier to type with your thumbs. Um, not so much of an issue here on the HTC One Max, but this is a mode that would be very useful on a tablet or if you do a lot of uh, typing a landscape mode. And it's actually worth mentioning that as of SwiftKey 4.3, there's just going to be one version for both phones and tablets. So whichever device you have, there's only going to be one version of SwiftKey that you need to worry about downloading. So let's jump back into the SwiftKey menu. We'll show you compact mode again. This is actually really useful on the Macs. It lets you move it from side to side and uh, have kind of a one-handed mode of the keyboard. Of course, SwiftKey Flow working just fine there. Uh, long press the arrow on the left or right side to move it across, depending if you're left or right-handed. Uh, again, really useful for larger sort of Galaxy Note or One Max type devices. And you can use the resize menu to control how much of the screen it takes up and more importantly, how far you have to reach across the screen with your thumb. But SwiftKey has one more trick up its sleeve, and this is actually pretty neat. It lets you undock the keyboard, and it gives you this floating keyboard that you can then push around the screen. So you can have the app in full screen mode and have the keyboard floating on top of it like this. And again, this is something that might be more useful to tablet owners, but it's there on the phone if you want it as well. And if you want to dock it back down to the bottom of the screen, it's just a case of grabbing it and dragging it back down there. So three keyboard modes now, and easy undocking and resizing. And when you undock it, it actually remembers which mode you're in. So uh, we're in thumbs mode, and we have this draggable split keyboard that we can move around. It's pretty cool. Anyway, that's going to wrap up our quick look at SwiftKey 4.3. It's being announced today as a public beta, and we've got more information in our news post on androidcentral.com. So check that out, and we'll see you next time.